we looked at 10 superstars that must be traded, and all those were a little more on the extreme side of things. So instead, now I want to go through and look at one trade, the biggest trade that every NBA team needs to make. Not one that has to make them instantly a playoff team or become a championship team right away, but to put them in the right direction based on where they're at. Whether that's for rebuilding, or it is becoming a championship team. I may have a couple of repeats for my superstar video, but I tried to avoid those and switch things up while also mentioning the most important trade for everyone. So first up, we have the Cavs. And for them, I already talked about Kevin Love trades in the other video, which also speaking of that, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description. They should give Darius Garland more time before they trade him. So that leaves us with Andre Drummond, who they'll probably let his contract expire but if not and they do want to make a deal for him, maybe they try to get some draft picks and a young player or two from a team like the Celtics or the Mavericks, who could really use a center. The Hawks. And the Hawks were a tough one. They have good enough assets to the point where they could really trade for almost any young player in the league that they want but they got young guys at every position already. So I think for them, they should wait a little bit longer to see how everyone develops before making any moves too early on. But if they want to try something big, I think they should try looking into trading up to the third pick to drop James Wiseman. The Knicks. The Knicks have Julius Randle averaging 20 and 10 for them. And let's be honest, they won't really be needing him anytime soon. They're at the very beginning of a rebuild, so they should try to trade him and get back some value while they still can. And they could find good deals with the Suns, Wolves, Hornets, and Thunder, who could all use Randle, have young players to trade in return, and have some pretty good draft picks to offer too. The Pistons. The Pistons need to trade Derek Rose and Blake Griffin so they can start rebuilding. And seeing that Griffin will be much harder to find a trade for, their one trade for this video should be Derek Rose. And there's a few scenarios that would really be great for the Pistons. Like one to the Lakers for Kyle Kuzma and Quinn Cook could work, but seeing how Kuzma's been in the playoffs, maybe that's not such a good idea. If the Magic want to keep their playoff hopes alive, they could send over Wes a Wundu and a first round pick, and that would be a good start for the Pistons to start rebuilding. Then there's also a trade to the 76ers for a deal around Matisse Thybul and Zara Smith to also give them a good start with two young players. The Lakers. I honestly think the best deal that the Lakers could make would be that one to Detroit for Derrick Rose, because obviously they don't need to do much and really don't have any other options either. The Clippers. The Clippers locker room's lost respect for PG, so for that and his terrible performance, he should go and I'm really liking the Paul George deal to the Jazz from my last video. The Clippers really struggled against Jokic, so they could use Gobert and the Jazz may also want to change things up. A trade to the Nets has been talked about too, that would probably send over some combination of Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Karis LeVert to the Clippers. And that would give LA a much needed offensive player at point guard, great room protection, and a solid all around scorer in LeVert. The Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets don't really need to make any trades this offseason, and I don't think they should give up on any of their young players too early. But instead of that, I think it would be more important for them to be more focused on trying to steal away an unrestricted free agent. I'd love to see them sign a guy like Serge Ibaka with all the extra money they're going to have because he'd fit in perfect in Denver. If not him, there's guys like Van Vliet, Davis Bertans, and Bogdan Bogdanovich that would all fit great. The Jazz. If the Jazz plan on keeping most of their same squad together but want a small improvement somewhere, I'd love to see them swap Mike Conley for Chris Paul. It gives them one of the best playoff point guards in the NBA and it'd make them championship contenders. And it would give OKC Conley's expiring contract if they just wanted to get out of it. Plus, they could probably get a first round pick from Utah. The Kings. The Kings number one trait that they should focus on is one for Buddy Heald. And there's a few good scenarios. To the 76ers for Al Horford and Josh Richardson. To the Celtics with Corey Joseph for Gordon Hayward and a first round pick. To the Grizzlies for Gorgie Jane's expiring deal. Dylan Brooks and a first round pick. Or to the Hornets for Malik Monk and a first rounder. The 76ers. I'd like to see Philly get a true point guard and change Ben Simmons position to anywhere else on the court. They could do that by trading Josh Richardson and their 21st pick in the draft this year for Spencer Dinwiddie who still has a lot of potential and a lot of room to grow. Or Tobias Harris, Matisse Thybul, and that 21st pick for Chris Paul. Then either way from there, try to add another shooter to the team. The Miami Heat. Clearly the Heat don't need to do much besides develop, but maybe signing a guy like Serge Ibaka would be huge for them, or even finding a trade for Kendrick Nunn. The Bucks. Milwaukee's in a bad position. They don't really have much trade value that they can spare. If they could make something work though, they should go for Dinwiddie, Drew Holiday, or even Dennis Schroeder. Those should be their priorities, but they're not as likely, so maybe instead they try to trade Eric Bledsoe for Monte Morris and Will Barton, and that'd be a little more likely and would switch things up for both teams. The Indiana Pacers. Victor Oladipo's denied the rumors that he wants to be traded, but usually in situations where multiple rumors come out, like they did for him, they turn out being true. So if the rumors are true, they could trade him to the Kings for Buddy Heald, if Sacramento wants to risk him resigning there, or they could go for Gordon Hayward in a first round pick to still keep themselves in the playoff picture. 
the Wolves. The Wolves are in a tricky situation here. They have Towns, Russell, and just drafted Culver last year. And of course, with their luck, the one year they have the first overall pick, the top three players all play those same positions. I think they'll still draft Edwards or Lamelo, but if not, I say they try to trade down and land a deal like one to the Hawks, where they trade the first overall pick for the sixth pick and DeAndre Hunter, or maybe even Cam Reddish. The Mavs. The Mavs really don't have too much to offer in trade talks, but they need a big man. Preferably Rudy Gobert, but they probably aren't going to be able to afford him. They could go for Andre Drummond though, and offer their 18th pick along with Maxi Kleber and Tim Hardaway Jr. for him. The Magic. This one depends on whether they want to be in the playoffs or not, and depending on that, they should trade either Mo Bamba or Nikola Vucevic. For Vucevic, they could try to get Andrew Wiggins for him, or for Mo Bamba, they could look for a deal around Darius Garland since they desperately need more guards. The Rockets. I mean, unless it's trading James Harden, which I talked about in my previous trading video, there's really not much this team can do. The Spurs. The Spurs have four big contracts expiring at the end of next season. Patty Mills, DeMar DeRozan, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Rudy Gay. And they need to at least try to find deals for all four of them. I have no idea what those deals would be though. The Toronto Raptors. Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka, and Marc Gasol's deals all expired at the end of this year. So their first priority needs to be deciding if they can resign all three or which two to resign. Then they can decide on trades or sign in trades from there. The Wizards. I really don't have anything for the Wizards. I don't think Beal's leaving and Walt's contract's untradeable. Their first priority besides the trade though to be re-signing Davis Bertans who's an unrestricted free agent. The Hornets. The Hornets just aren't capable of making any trades this offseason. They should draft James Wiseman with the third pick then look to sign free agents and okay I know I'm supposed to be finding a trade for every team but for some of these it's just impossible to find one that really makes sense. The Bulls. The Bulls have been terrible recently. Now that Jim Boylan's gone though I think that'll make a big difference but they still need to do something. I want them to try to move up in the draft and get the second overall pick and draft Lamelo, but they don't have anything to offer for the Warriors. So instead, maybe try to get the Atlanta Hawks to swap John Collins for Lowry Markkinen and a future first round pick. Because the Hawks are being hesitant to pay John Collins big money and Lowry's slacking on the Bulls, so maybe switching the two could work well for both teams. The Brooklyn Nets. I said that I don't think Bradley Beal will move on from the Wizards, but we're looking at the best trade that each team should try to make, and from the Brooklyn Nets standpoint, they should try and get him for some combination of Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Karis LeVert, and it'd give them a pretty serious big three. Or they could also trade Jared Allen and Spencer Dinwiddie to the Pelicans for Drew Holiday. Drew needs to be traded, and these guys are great young players to get in return. The Celtics. The Celtics have a great squad, and the only thing they really were missing this year was big men. And since they don't want to break up their core squad, they could trade Gordon Hayward with either Robert Williams or a draft pick to the Magic for Aaron Gordon and Mo Bamba, and that could work out. It'd give the Celtics big men that they desperately need down low, and it would keep Orlando in the playoff picture if that's where they wanted to go. If not, a trade of Robert Williams, Carson Edwards, and a first round pick for Jared Allen to be their starting center and shot blocker could work too. The Thunder. The Thunder really couldn't be in a better position. With all the young players they have though, they should look to find trades for Chris Paul, Dennis Schroeder, and Steven Adams. They should definitely trade these guys for young stars, but I'm not going to list off all the possible trades because between the three of them there's hundreds of scenarios and good trades to be made. The Blazers. So I said there wasn't much for the Spurs, but when thinking of Portland, I found one that works for both sides. So send LaMarcus Aldridge back to Portland for Zach Collins and Trevor Ariza. I hope in the front court would be huge for the Blazers and they'll have the salary space to make it work. While on the other hand, the Spurs should do it only if they can't find anything better for Aldridge, because they'll get a young Zach Collins who's shown some potential as a good two-way big man. The Grizzlies. The Grizzlies may want to do something to try and stay in the playoff picture next year with the Warriors coming back and teams like the Pelicans getting better. But again, if I was them, I'd be hesitant to give up on any of the rising stars too early on. For the Pelicans, they really need a young center going forward, and there are two deals for them that can make that work. One for Drew Holiday where they get Jared Allen and Spencer Dinwiddie in return, like I mentioned for the Nets, or the other where they trade JJ Redick and Josh Hart for Miles Turner, which would be great for both teams. For the Golden State Warriors, the Warriors have the second overall pick in Andrew Wiggins, and they could do a lot of things here, would probably benefit the most from getting a big man. So they can either try and trade Andrew Wiggins for Steven Adams, Andrew Wiggins for Nikola Vucevic, or try to find some deal revolving around him for Miles Turner and TJ Warren, or for Rudy Gobert. All of them could work, some more likely than others, but I'd like to see them do something along those lines. Then finally we have the Suns, and honestly the Suns don't need to do much. I like the direction they're finally headed, and I loved how good Kelly Oubre was for them this year, putting up 19 a game. But the Suns went 8-0 without him in the bubble, so they could use him as a trade asset to get a power forward where they're still lacking. 
I didn't see many great ones, but there were a few, like Kelly Oubre for Aaron Gordon, Kelly Oubre for Brandon Clark and Justice Winslow, or Kelly Oubre and Cameron Johnson for Nemanja Bialica and Marvin Bagley. Some of those are a little lopsided, they're not perfect, but they do have potential. And I'll admit, not all of these were perfect, but I tried to get creative and come up with at least one big trade for every team that would work and make sense for both sides. If you think you found any better ones though, I want to hear them in the comments down below, so comment them and let me know, drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you next video.